Now, each year, Forbes Africa looks for resilient self-starters, innovators, entrepreneurs, and distributors um, who have disruptors, rather, uh, who have uh, the acumen to stay the course in their chosen field. Come what may, Zimbabwe has fielded two successful candidates and a tech maverick, uh, Sheikh Mo uh, Timburwa. Uh, one of them is also an energy and is an energy and tech maverick, um, um, and also is a uh, been part of the celebration of uh, International Youth Week. As uh, we do acknowledge him here today on Good Morning Zimbabwe. Matimburu, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much. It's an honor for you having me here. Yeah, it definitely is an honor for us having you here. Now, I would love to appreciate uh, a bit more about your acclaim to being a maverick in the tech industry, but let's get to understand who is Sheikh Mo Timburu. Okay, thank you so much for this uh, wonderful opportunity. Uh, I would say Sheikh Mo Timburu is a young businessman who is 29 years old. Mm. I recently turned 29 on the 10th of on the 9th of May. Mm. So my story started. Uh, I'm a person who was passionate about life, and my goal is to live my life to the fullest and make impact and also inspire the generation that is coming after me. Right. That's that's basically me. And uh, I stand for integrity and I also stand for the feathering the feathering of our country Zimbabwe and also making sure the narrative of Africa is recognized worldwide and globally. Right. So basically, that's me and that's my story. Mm -hmm. Briefly, tell us a bit about where you grew up, your childhood experiences, but more importantly, how you found yourself engaging in the passion that you have just shared. Okay. Uh, I grew up in the uh, eastern highlands of Zimbabwe, which mm -hmm. is Manikaland. I was born in Mtare, and I was raised in Mtare, and uh, that's where I grew up. And uh, how I got to be in, uh, in the passion that I'm doing right now, it was basically started by the catastrophic situation that was happening around 2009 2010 which was the high load shedding that was happening in our country right so that pursued me or that pushed me to then look into an alternative of seeing how best i can also be able to help my country mm. attain a sustainable uh sustainable solution to that problem because mm. because of the high volume of load shedding that was happening th during that time people were now engaging in uh, fossil fuels, which is cutting down of trees, but it was so catastrophic. Right. That's what uh, inspired my passion. All right, so Forbes gets a hold of you. Definitely. Right? Definitely. Forbes says, listen, shake more. We want to put you in our list. Definitely. Tell me a bit about how that happened. You know how, how that happened is that mm. uh, the Forbes, uh, Forbes Africa, they are always looking for those that are doing successful and the doings that are also doing things that can also help the feathers of the civilization of humanity. Mm. So I think my leverage was uh the business that was listed in the forbes is mainly trying to solve the humanitarian problem which is the energy crisis right and our goal is to make sure my goal is to make sure africa is not left out on the agenda of having clean energy mm. so i always call it kept to cairo dream right if someone could uh could do kept to cairo dream like our own mr strive masio is connecting the whole continent mm. to liquid africa to liquid uh, internet right. why can't you also do the same to connect the whole of Africa to clean energy. That's right. possible, okay. and that's my dream. I want to know what your thought on this, yeah. Um, sure. There were rumored reports that came in a, a while back on uh, the Senegalese, American-based uh, artist, Akon, if I'm not mistaken, Definitely. who came up with this uh, am amazing idea where he uh, electrified a whole uh, collective, and that seems to be a step in the direction that we're seeing people moving towards Definitely. our energy. Definitely. What's your take on that initiative that he has put in place, but more importantly, how have you applied a similar measure here and scaling up throughout the continent? Okay, I think uh, pertaining the Akon issue, uh, I'm privileged and I'm also honored to talk to one of his very close friends who was part of that project. Right. Why I go to talk to him is because I also wanted to understand those that have walked the walk and those that have done it mm. because they have learned the grave mistakes that can be done. Mm. So I don't need to go through the same process. They can help me dodge the mistakes that they have seen right. in their implementation of that similar project. Mm. So I would say that's a very good and great initiative, especially looking from the perspective of Econ. Mm -hmm. He's a man who was celebrated in America, right. but he also came back to invest his profits and his accolades back into his country right. Senegal. Mm -hmm. So I would say personally, the goal is to make sure Africa, it's a holistic approach. Right. The goal is to make sure it's not only happening in Senegal, but it happens in the whole of Africa. Right. Now, I also do want to acknowledge a few of the formal things uh, in our discussion today. Now, you sure. already represent Zimbabwe at the Global Chamber of Business Leaders, a Young Business Leaders Program. Sure. What does the recognition from Ford's Africa mean, especially in tying into that uh, particular representation that you have? Uh, being part of the global, being part of the board of the Global Business Chambers has given me so many opportunities and also now being listed by Forbes 
helps me describe or explain the narrative of my country, Zimbabwe. Mm. Being in the chamber or being in the JCBL helps me to, it has helped me to interact with the different leaders uh, in corporate world. Mm. Uh, these are doings in their industry. These mm. are into manufacturing, automobile. We talk about mining and commodities. We talk about the people that are willing to also inject in the African continent. Mm -hmm. So now being on the Forbes list helps me to also mm -hmm. acclaim the narrative of Africa, especially my country, Zimbabwe. Right. Okay. Yes. Um, I just can't help but want to ask this question. Sure. sure. Um, when it comes to producing um, services and even products, commodities mm -hmm. rather, mm -hmm. on the African continent for us and ourselves, where do you see ourselves in the future in terms of industrializing? Are we, are, are we there yet? Or are we still consumers? You know, I, I, I would say uh, the, greatest, uh, the greatest key to poverty is productivity. And uh, as a way of feathering our industrialization as Africa, I was happy with what Rwanda did. Mm -hmm. Now they've just commissioned their the biggest one of the biggest refineries in Africa, right? Whereby they gold are refineries. exactly yes. gold refinery, where they are trying to avoid the resources that are coming from leaving. Africa, right. leaving Africa right. as right. crude products. Mm -hmm. They want the value chain to happen in Africa, which is what is very key to the continent okay. of Africa. We have got so many resources that are being exploited from Africa and they are being developed outside of Africa right. and when they come back they are double the price they are ten times the price of w how much we can be buying them right. I'll give you a very good example in Africa we don't have a well cutting and polishing diamond institution our diamonds are oh. taken into Belgium. Shekmo, don't get me started. Definitely. <laughs> don't definitely, get me started. This interview won't definitely. end. Yes. But um, uh, if anyone wants to get a hold of you, um, do you have any social media platform that you can share before we wrap up our discussion? Yeah, sure. Uh, they can see me on Facebook. I've got a page called Sheki Timburwa and also on Instagram. It's Sheki World. On Twitter, it's S Timburwa. And on LinkedIn, it's Sheki Timburwa. All right. Those awesome. Are my Thank handles. you so much to my guest here in studio, uh, Mr. Shekmo Timbura, managed to make his way onto the Forbes uh, under 30 list. And we definitely will be giving you more updates on his developments as we engage.